So it's early morning, a whole bunch of photographers here. We're about to uh, go, well, I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna go do. We're on a ranch where we have a lot of ranch activity, but there's also a lot of wildlife because we're just outside Grand Teton National Park. A lot of bears, a lot of elk, a lot of moose. Apparently there's wolves in the area. So hopefully we're gonna get a chance to do some wildlife photography. Looks like it's time to go. Feel free. We have a little bit of time. They haven't put on their saddles yet. They'll be riding out in maybe the next five or six minutes. And so if you want, we can kind of walk to the edge of the trees so you can get an idea and then choose between the two. But because we have a little bit bigger group, it's probably best to split up. Um, but it actually is pretty cool here in the trees because the horses will kind of be coming all around you and then different things. And so, so the reason I'm here is there was a, a presentation last night by some really, really amazing photographers at this conference called Wild Speak. It's for the International Landscape, it's the International Landscape Photographers, International, International Landscape Conservation Photographers. I believe that's right, hard to remember. Basically, this is like a little photo shoot that they threw together the day after the, the presentations. And um, I'm just here because Sony is sponsoring the event. They had a couple extra spots and they invited myself along. We also have Mark Smith, who has a really great YouTube channel, a great wildlife photographer. And I'm just here pretending to be a wildlife photographer. And I just realized that I'm all alone. And right now there's a bunch of grizzly bears very active in the area. I just killed a moose next to our little lodge over here. So I better go catch up with the group. So you got like the, the horse in the mountain with like layers horse, of fog. I was thinking like a... 60 inch print put in like a resort wall. Nice. Good, guys. Hey. Where'd the orange poncho go? I looked at my phone and said it wasn't gonna rain till 10. I was so like over I there. I got like five hours. I <laughs> the like Auss Aussie, like Nat Geo dude, or whatever they were talking about last night, he like took a photo of me and he's like, oh, that's way too bright. And oh I was my like, God. <laughs> So this ranch is quite quite beautiful. There's lots of beautiful stands of aspen trees and tons of horses, which apparently they're going to get all corralled up or something in a little bit. It's not really, it's not really my jam. I'm not really a equine type photographer, but it's a beautiful area. And we've been listening to the, been listening to that. Um, but we've been listening to elk bugling all morning. Such a cool, cool thing to have in the morning. There's lots of kind of low, low clouds and lots of atmosphere in the mountains in the distance. I'm excited for the light to poke out and potentially light up some of this foliage because the fall foliage is just starting here. I think stuff's still gonna start happening here in a second. I should figure out if, if I wanna shoot it or not. So here we have the bird whisperer. <laughs> hey. <laughs> If you guys don't already follow this guy on YouTube, you should do so. Mark Smith Photography? Or Mark yeah, Smith? yeah. Thanks, man. Awesome bird photographer. He's, he's the you. Osprey Whisperer. <laughs> That's what some people call me. Yeah. The guy yesterday from Ireland tagged me the Osprey Man. <laughs> the Osprey Man. He's yeah. got some of the most killer shots of Osprey fishing. Ah, thanks, um, man. Awesome stuff. And it's always entertaining stuff, too, because he does these cool little story voiceovers for all of his <laughs> photo shoots. Really cool. Make sure you follow this guy. Yeah, cool. So now we've came out into the National Park, Grand Teton National Park, and we're at just one of the little pull-off vistas with the Snake River in the foreground, the beginnings of some beautiful fall color, and then you know the incredible Tetons in the background. The light has dramatically changed. This morning it was very rainy and overcast. Now the sun is kind of burnt off some of that cloud cover. There's still quite a bit of low clouds up around the mountains, but occasionally some of those jagged peaks are peeking out through all that low cloud and it makes it makes it so much fun to shoot because the composition is constantly changing it has a sense of atmosphere and oh, i just can't wait to check these out 
So this shot is probably my favorite of the whole trip. I just loved the atmosphere that was happening around the mountain. And when you combine that bright highlight that's kind of happening in the clouds back behind the mountain, it just gives it this kind of backlit, mysterious feel. In post-processing, I was really trying to amplify what I liked, which was kind of the two-tone tonality that was happening with our colors. We have the really cool tones of the low clouds. I tried not to let those get too saturated. And then I kind of amped up the backlit warm light that was happening on the clouds back behind the mountain. Straight out of camera, it looked like this. And then in my post-processing, I tried to maintain shadow information, keep it fairly dark and fairly moody, yet control the saturation and really amp up that backlight that was happening. So in this shot, I really wanted the viewer's eye to go to the fall foliage. And the way I chose to do that is to really restrict the colors elsewhere in the image. So the mountain in the background because of the haze and because of the, of the cool tones that were happening in the sky, I ended up going pretty desaturated with everything in the background. And the purpose for that was to allow the eye to come forward into that fall foliage the eye is always going to be drawn to saturation, so I let the saturation pretty much only reside in that fall foliage. Maybe a little bit overdone. I'll probably take another look at post-processing this with a tiny bit more saturation in the background, but not too much. So this panorama is another one of my favorite shots, and I just love the amount of low cloud and atmosphere that's happening in the mountains back behind all of the aspen and fall foliage. And I also love the kind of warm to cool color contrast that we have going on. It really makes those trees in the foreground stand out because of that color contrast. Also because they are getting hit with light and there's a lot of shadow back on the mountain behind. So this was just a handheld panorama. And one of the crazy things about doing a panorama with a high resolution camera like the Sony a7R 4 is the crazy amount of resolution you end up with. This shot ended up being 36,000 pixels on the long end, which is just nuts. And I'll be able to print this thing absolutely huge. Another shot that I liked from the trip was another misty mountain type shot. Again, I was trying to have that color contrast theme. This time it's kind of reverse where I made sure that all of the all of the clouds and all of the mist surrounding the mountains was very cool color temperature wise. And then I kind of emphasized the warm light that was hitting the mountain. That way, again, we have that cool to warm color contrast happening. If it's all just kind of a wash of one color, I feel like it's not quite as interesting. So I tried to do a little something with, with the colors in this one. But I really like how the mountain, again, is just shrouded in that low fog and that low, low cloud. So this shot is actually just a small segment of that big panorama. I shot this separately, but I really liked the mix of colors that we had going on here. So when I post-process this, I really tried to maintain as much color separation as I could. If I went too warm with my color temperature, it was just going to be yellow on yellow, and I wanted to make sure that the greens were separate from the yellows, which were separate from the orange, which was separate from the cool tones in the background. To me, this story is all about the, the palette of colors, and I tried to really maintain color separation in this shot. I love these little vignettes of nature. Sometimes it's like organized chaos in a way, and I really like these kind of shots. Overall, very happy with the shots that I came away from in only 48 hours of being in the area. The Teton Valley is such an incredibly beautiful place.